a privileged and thoroughly Midwestern white woman. <laughs> and I've been fortunate enough to enjoy the advantages of that position. In my nearly 78 years, I've also formed invisible identities, explored intersectional cultures, and have learned from the experiences of family and friends. These lessons have enriched my life and prepared me to achieve, enjoy, and survive the unexpected. One example of an early inter cultural intersection was with my grandparents. My father was raised in Colombia by immigrant parents. My grandfather was a traveling junk peddler who settled in Colombia so that his children would have access to an education. In contrast, my mother grew up in sophisticated New York City. Her mother thought Missouri was the fabled Wild West. In, in fact, she wanted my mother to return to New York to deliver me because she was afraid there might be an attack during the birth. Fortunately, we were perfectly safe. We did, however, live on a winding gravel road that was considered way out in the country, so I grew up a country girl. My father was an active member of the local business community. At the time, the distinction between the university and the community was even greater than it is today. Fortunately, my parents and I were able to cross that line between town and gown. So I grew up learning about both. Two principles guided my parents and set an example for us. In the words of a Jewish philosopher, God divided man into men so they could help one another. Forgive the gender-specific language. And paraphrasing Abraham Lincoln, you have a right to criticize if you have a heart to help. We were a Jewish family in a predominantly Christian world. My friends were Catholic, Protestant, and Mormon, and I got to go to mass and Sunday school with each of them on occasion. It was, however, also a time when realtors in Colombia wouldn't show houses to Jewish families in certain neighborhoods here. Jews couldn't join the country club, among other things. And my prom date saw absolutely nothing wrong in proudly telling me that he had Jewed someone down on a price. Fortunately, however, my community felt like all of Colombia not just the Jews. My father was one of the first businessmen in town to hire a black man for a non-service position. Before doing so, he went to talk to the employees to make sure there wouldn't be a problem. One man, who turned out to be a long-term employee, said, oh, I can work with anybody except a Jew. That man called me after my father had died to tell me that story. My father had never mentioned it. Always eager for new experiences, I chose a college as different from life in Columbia as I could possibly get. East rather than Midwest, private, not public, big city, not small town. There, I was confronted with other cultural differences, large and small. I was admonished for cheering at a football game, very different from life in Columbia on a Saturday. <laughs> My small town ways were considered odd and even somewhat disconcerting to those who'd gone to prep school and had debutante coming out parties, which had nothing to do with sexual orientation in those days. And for the first time, I encountered a large number of Jews, some of whom were surprised to learn that there even were Jews in Missouri. <laughs> Talk about being parochial. All of this is to explain that I was attracted to and not daunted by spending time in an entirely different culture, 
So I applied to the Peace Corps and was sent to Uganda, East Africa. There, the Ugandans were not the only ones different from me or I from them. The government school where I taught was run by semi-cloistered Franciscan nuns from Ireland, and most of the other teaching staff were also British. In fact, one, a Scotsman, became my husband a few years later, and we subsequently spent two years in Indonesia where our son was born before returning to Colombia. The longest single job I have ever had was eight years in the Missouri legislature. <laughs> My wide-ranging, and some might even say dilettantish, uh, job path taught me to work with those different from me while developing my confidence in my own abilities and ways of engaging and understanding the world. When I joined the Missouri House, I was asked by a colleague how I managed to navigate the new environment. My reply, I assume I've gone to another foreign country. <laughs> I learned the language, the culture, the customs and expectations in each place that I've lived, and I'll do the same here. I never assume that my way is the right way, or at least not initially. <laughs> While working through the most contentious issue I faced during my time in the House, I encountered strong criticism and even some threats. I felt I had made some significant enemies. Later, however, some of those same people confided that they actually admired my courage in standing up for what I believed was right. And they actually had agreed with me but been, had been afraid to say so. In this case, my way didn't turn out to be what was enacted, but it certainly was the right way for me. Although I had stood out as a minority in the past, white in Africa, Jewish in Colombia, Midwestern in Pennsylvania, I encountered the opposite as a gray-haired woman in the Missouri legislature, invisibility. It seems that all gray-haired women or white-haired women look alike. At least that would seem to be the case since we're often confused for each other. The same has continued to happen in Colombia on occasion. To some people, those perceived, often erroneously, as having little, little power or ability, all seem to look alike. We should all try to see people as they truly are. So what have I learned from all of this long life? It's okay to be different. In fact, Seek out and embrace new experiences, other ways of thinking, and varying approaches to engaging in the world. Seeing things differently may strengthen your initial beliefs or may change your mind entirely, but you won't know until you open yourself up to different views of the world. And when you do, be sure that you can disagree without being disagreeable, something we need more of right now. Once you've sought out new perspectives, the most important work begins. Get involved and use your voice to further the knowledge you've gained and the lessons you have learned. If kept to yourself, your insights will not have the value or the impact that they deserve. Remember the words of Abe Lincoln, you have a right to criticize if you have a heart to help and as we advise newcomers in the legislature, take everything seriously except yourself. <laughs>